This video is brought to you by Gamersubs. Use code MHB at checkout for 10% off your next order. I don't think I'll ever accept the fact that I might not be a fan of Assassin's Creed anymore. I haven't finished a game in the series since Black Flag, and yet when a new one releases, I'm right there ready to play it day one. I think something in me just wants to relive the glory days of the series, but it just never hits the same with these new games. Well, that changes this year. In 2024, I want to platinum as many Assassin's Creed games as I can stomach to see if the old ones really do be hitting, or at the very least platinum some games that I am incredibly nostalgic for and regard as some of my all-time favourite games. Thankfully, the original Assassin's Creed doesn't have any trophies, so I dodged a bullet there. I just never liked the first game, what can I say? So instead, I get to jump straight into the cream of the crop, the Ezio Trilogy. Assassin's Creed 2, Brotherhood, and Revelations was honestly where my fandom peaked. Assassin's Creed 2 until Black Flag was my favourite in the series, Brotherhood was just more of it, which I'm totally fine with, and Revelations I always found was an underrated entry in the series. Ezio for me is still the best protagonist the series has ever had, and I'm excited to not only revisit these games today, but grab some platinum trophies for games that, if nothing else, meant so much to me in high school. As always, if you do end up enjoying the content, be sure to like the video, comment below some more Platinums you'd like to see me tackle next, subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos, and go over to twitch.tv slash mayorhairbear if you want to see some of these Platinum journeys live. But with the obligatory plugs out the way, grab something to eat and drink, sit back and relax because this is going to be a decently long one. First up, Assassin's Creed 2. By far and away the simplest platinum in this trilogy, scoring a 3 out of 10 in terms of difficulty and should take around 20 hours to complete. I already had 36 out of the 51 trophies going in from when I first picked up the collection back in 2017, and instead of just picking up where I left off in chapter 10, I thought what the hell, let's double it. I have Assassin's Creed 2 on PS3, why not platinum the game there from start to finish and then come back to the Ezio collection and clean up those remaining 50 trophies. That way I get to break down the entire experience for all three games consistently. Anyway, we boot up the old PS3 that at this point sounds more and more like it's developed Emphysema and begin our journey, literally right from the beginning with Ezio's birth. Time, Desmond. We have to leave. The birth of an assassin. Be born. Pretty, pretty easy trophy right there. Back to the present, Desmond breaks out of Abstergo with the help of Kristen Bell. Oh my god, the second trophy already. And gets taken to a safe house with a new and improved Animus. Desmond must relive and experience the memories of his ancestor Ezio to train as an assassin to stop Abstergo and the Templars in the present. Into the Animus we go. Welcome to the Animus 2.0. Traveling to the Italian Renaissance where Ezio is now a brash and suave young man. He's getting into fights, sleeping around, doing some parkour, helping a young Leonardo da Vinci, just living it up. Until his father and two brothers are framed for treason and executed right in front of him. I know. That escalated quickly. It jumped up a notch. It did, didn't it? So of course the man who betrayed our trust is the first man on our hit list and once that mess is dealt with, we flee Florence with our mother and sister to their villa where we meet Ezio's uncle, Mario. Mario explains that their family is a part of the Assassin Brotherhood and our father was killed for uncovering a conspiracy involving the Templars. Mario offers to train Ezio as an assassin and once his training is complete, it's time to seek vengeance against those Templar scum. This game's story spans over a decade, so a lot of bodies hit in the floor, but also lots of friends and alliances being formed before Ezio identifies Rodrigo Borgia as the main man of this Italian Templar operation. Oh, an unexpected journey, there we go. I've done, I finished The Hobbit already. <laughs> That's a terrible joke. All this time in the Animus though has made Desmond blur the lines between reality and fiction, but hey, at least the training is paying off. Ultimately, Ezio ends up in Venice after taking out more and more conspirators. 
where Rodrigo is set to receive the Apple of Eden, a powerful artifact that we do not want in Templar hands. Thankfully, through Ezio and his friends crashing the party, Rodrigo flees with his life, leaving the apple in our hands. This is where we learn, shocker, all our buddies are actually assassins, and Ezio officially joins the Assassin Brotherhood and well from here there is a big time jump due to lost sequences. They turned them into lackluster DLC. In that time Rodrigo has become Pope. We have all the pages of the codex and through it learned the vault Rodrigo was searching for is underneath the Vatican. So we head to Rome to battle Rodrigo only to let him live in the end. We get this big spiel from a hologram in the vault that I personally just zone out for, but in short, she is trying to warn us that the same extinction event that wiped out her people is going to happen again in the present. We exit the Animus, escape Abstergo once again, and are now on the run, ready to continue the story in Brotherhood. Before we move on to some more trophy goodness, can I just get something off my chest? I know some people love it and they eat this up, but I hate the present day story. Like seriously, cannot stand it. I don't need it, I don't care for it, I just want to be back in the Animus, exploring the time period and experiencing that story. That's why I buy the game. Not because I want to see what Desmond and the gang are up to. I am invested in Ezio's tale of revenge and character arc, so let's keep me there. That goes for every Assassin's Creed game, so I don't have to repeat myself in future videos. Anyway, now that I'm sure I've pissed off numerous diehard fans, for completing the story in Assassin's Creed 2, you're guaranteed to unlock 18 trophies, one of which is for completing the Assassin Tomb that is a must to finish the story. More on these later, but the story does contain a missable trophy, at least in the PS3 version. In sequence 8, when you're operating the flying machine, make sure to kick a guard off a building for a quick trophy. This isn't missable in the Ezio collection as there is a way to replay the mission, but if you're on PS3, make sure to grab it. That's the guaranteed and the one missable trophy, but what about the other 32 trophies? Honestly, a lot of the remaining trophies I unlocked while playing through the story. Once the credits rolled, I only had 9 trophies left to go and grab because a lot of the trophies are either very natural, get while playing type of deal, or are super simple to execute. I mean, you have things like jumping from the tallest building in Florence. What the hell? I dive. Oh, like, I think I, I think I vaguely remember that trophy. It's hard to tell with PlayStation 3 delays. Sprinting for 100 meters. Lightning strike upgrading a building in the stronghold and reaching 80% total value for the stronghold. Handyman, the handyman can. There we go. Podesta of Montenegro. Huh? Montegiano? I think I've just fucking slurred. <laughs> Catching a Borgia Courier. Mailman. Pickpocketing $1,000. Kleptomaniac. Synchronizing 10 viewpoints. I like the view. Tossing $300 on the ground. There we go, man of the people. Using our eagle vision to spot and scan a glyph in the world, which ultimately unlocks a piece of the truth. They, they, they Tip of the iceberg, there we go. A piece of the puzzle. Buying a painting from Florence and Venice. <laughs> oh my god, the delay, man. Art connoisseur. <laughs> Spending $5,000 on hose. <laughs> hey, red light addict. And getting all hidden blade item pouches and armor upgrades for Ezio. There we go, victory lies in preparation. Then you have the six assassin tombs to explore, each with a trophy, which is always a must because Altair's armor is so damn strong and they're great fun to complete, even if the platforming was giving me some serious grief. Get up. Ezio, you fuck. Why, oh boy. There we go. I can see your house from here. That one really made me feel stupid. Prison escape. Hallowed be thy name. 
Venetian Gladiator. Then there's the combat trophies for doing things like completing an air assassination on a poisoned NPC. Just a quick poison stab near a ledge and you're golden. There we go, doctor. I was gonna say, I'm, uh, I'm just gonna go and I'll let the trophy figure itself out. Killing 10 enemies without being hit in one combat encounter, which is really easy when the enemies bug out and don't attack. Someone gonna attack? There's probably like 10 of you around, isn't there? What is going on? <laughs> we might be able to cheese no hitter. No hitter! Yeah, we, I mean, we cheesed it, but we take that. Hiding five dead bodies in a bale of hay. There we go, Jesus Christ. It's like, is this trophy actually busted on me? Come on. And then there's the Mesa, Sandman and Sweeper trophies. These two trophies are what gave me the most grief in the whole game because they both require long windups in large enemy groups, which is just a recipe for disaster. Oh, fuck off. This is the worst trophy, man. One, it's the, it's fucking useless. Ugh. There we go. You, you kid dogs. Yes, sweeper, get f That's the last one I need. That's every trophy I got before the credits rolled, leaving just some side mission and collectible trophies remaining, mostly outside of buying and dyeing our clothes in wetland, ebony, and ivory, which is bought in Forley. Oh, there we go. Perfect harmony. Now collectible wise, we needed to collect 100 feathers, find and solve 20 glyphs and find eight statuettes in the villa. The latter being by far the quickest and simplest. Myth maker. With that done, I opened up a map with all collectibles, chucked on some YouTube videos and just spent five hours cleaning up the remaining trophies. First of which was to defend a woman's honor, just look for a beat em up event, and if it's a woman, she'll get you to bash her cheating husband, and the trophy is yours. Don't make me wait too long. There we go. Macho man. Then complete an assassination contract mission. Assassin for hire. And win a race against thieves. Steal home. That's all you needed to do for the side missions, and with that out the way, all that was left was to scour each location until I unlocked all 20 pieces of the truth with Adam and Eve. Subject 16, a Vitruvian man. Collected all feathers in the game, which granted me the Auditor cape. Last one. And then... Dope. Now, do we get the trophy now, or when we... Oh, in memory of Petruchio. And with said cape, went to each city yet again, and unlocked Assassin's Creed 2's Platinum Trophy on the PS3. Alrighty, this should be it. There we go. Show your colors. Master Assassin. So that's Assassin's Creed 2 done on the PS3, and um, time for the Ezio collection. <laughs> Again, on the Ezio collection, I didn't have much left to do to grab the Platinum Trophy. The only difference was I had to play through the DLC sequences, which again, aren't good. But I will say the jump from PS3 straight to PS4 was like going from cataracts to perfect vision. It was crazy. It's like my eyes, like outside the shadows coming in and out, like everywhere. Like that was, that's bad. It's like <laughs> I smeared Vaseline over my eyes and after a week or so, however long it took me to finish it on the PS3, it's like, okay, it's finally washed out of my eyes. And just like that, we Platinum Assassin's Creed 2 twice in under 26 hours, and we were ready to move on to Brotherhood. I'll be honest, Assassin's Creed 1 and 2 are the only games in the series I've ever replayed, so I was excited to finally revisit Brotherhood and Revelations after 13 years. Now, according to PSM Profiles, Brotherhood ranks at about a 6 out of 10 in terms of difficulty and should take 55 hours to complete, which would be true if we were talking about the PS3 version. In the Ezio collection, no more multiplayer trophies because, well, no more multiplayer. And instead, now the DLC trophies are there to replace them. So instead of a multiplayer grind, now we need to get 100% synchronization in both the main game and DLC, thanks to the trophy Il Principe? Awesome. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's boot up Brotherhood and get started. We start off trying to skip to the end of the game pretty unsuccessfully. Well, that was a quick trophy. 
So we head back to the beginning right after the events of Assassin's Creed 2, celebrating a job well done. To no one's surprise, letting the Pope live backfired, the villa is attacked by his son, everything we built in the last game is in ruin, and the apple is back in the hands of the Templars. A wounded Ezio and some survivors escape the villa to head for Rome. Battle wounds, there we go. Sequence 1. Back to the present, Desmond and the gang are at Mario's villa in search of the apple. So after getting the power going, we boot up the Animus again and back to the good stuff. Sanctuary! Sanctuary! Back in Rome, the Templar HQ in Italy, Ezio's mission is to get revenge on the Borgia family and retrieve the apple once more. But first, the Assassin Order is far too weak after the attack and we need to rebuild by recruiting more members. Our main villain for Brotherhood is Cesare Borgia, son of the Pope, and basically the story just revolves around foiling his plans, sabotaging his resources, and of course, taking out those close to him, and in the process, recapture Rome for the Assassins. Rome in ruin. Fix up. Principa Pesipa. <laughs> oh my god. Princip. Oh Jesus. <laughs> I gave it a crack. Fundraiser. Forget Paris. Bloody Sunday. This all leads to Cesare killing his father for the apple, Ezio beating him to it, wiping his army out, and Cesare is put in jail for murdering his father. Vittoria Ugly Assassini. <laughs> a few years later though, he's out of prison, we're at the sequence that wouldn't load in the beginning, and finally take this spoiled brat out for good. I'm not even, I'm not even gonna attempt that one. Back to the present, Desmond and the squad use Ezio's memories to narrow down the apple's location, and again, I kind of zone out here, but the big cliffhanger is Desmond is forced to kill Kristen Bell. Which forces Desmond into a coma for some reason, and that's the story for Brotherhood. A knife to the heart. Oh my god, that was so fucking needlessly long. For your troubles, completing the story for Brotherhood is guaranteed to score you 14 trophies, one of which is for completing a shrine that is connected to the story. Golden Boy. And another for destroying one of Da Vinci's death machines. Bang! But as always, we got a lot more than that before the credits rolled, like the two missable trophies for exiting the Animus and doing riveting things like reading your emails. Mailer Damon. Demon? Or finding an artifact. Okay, the second one's alright, but emails, come on now. Dust to dust. Marie's feather chest, hey, that's pretty cool. These are missable after sequence 8 though, so do get them done before, or you'll just need to start a new game. Since I needed 100% synchronization on every mission, I made sure to replay a level I previously failed. Deja vu, don't even have to play the mission, which is cool. And with that 100% done, I also completed 100% of an entire sequence. Perfect recall, there we go. I threw some money in a well and made a wish this platinum wouldn't take too long. This should be a quick and easy trophy. Your wish is granted. Renovated five buildings in the Antico district for some cash flow. Home improvement, nice. Killed a guard with the sandbag from the new lifts. Yeah, that's right. Got another easy trophy going up. Recruited three assassins. <laughs> Brotherhood. Destroyed Leonardo's naval cannon so no one could have such power. Splash. And completed a couple more of the Romulus lairs to boot for some puzzle platforming fun. Gladiator. Undertaker 2.0. And that was everything I managed to complete before those credits rolled. 25 out of 51 trophies, so halfway there. Or still a shit ton left, depends what sort of attitude you have. So what exactly do we have left? Well, we had more shrines to discover, more Da Vinci inventions to destroy, DLC to complete, 
collectibles to find and let's not forget earning 100% synchronization. What does that entail exactly? Well, first of all, 100% sync means you complete the optional objective of a given mission. It can be anything from not being detected to getting a kill in a certain way or not taking damage. Whatever it may be, you need to do it and the kicker is if you fail it, no restarting from the checkpoint, just restart the mission and try again. Now to get the trophy Ill Principe and 100% sync both the main game and DLC, we need to complete the optional objectives in all the main story sequences, all missions in the DLC, all the side missions, that's Templar Agents, Assassination Contracts, Thief and Courtesan missions, and every Shrine and War Machine mission. Yeah, that's a fun one and we'll dive into this again later, but for now, baby steps. Let's get some gimme trophies like burning all the Borgia Towers that I would have finished if the map wasn't locked all the time in the main game. Tower Offense Easy peasy. Completed the remaining shrines. One man wrecking crew. Amen. Got that full sync too. Plumber. Leveled up a recruit to the rank of assassin. Just constantly send your recruits out on missions. It's good money and the stronger they are, the more helpful. Welcome to the brotherhood. That's not really that hard a challenge. Destroyed Da Vinci's bomber and tank. I'll get back to you later. Kaboom! Boom! 100% sync too. And earned three gold medals in the virtual training program. Free run is a breeze for this. Perfectionist. And it was around this time I decided to boot up the DLC, The Da Vinci Disappearance, where, as you can probably guess, Leonardo has been kidnapped and we need to find him. During these DLC missions, I finally unlocked a couple of combat trophies for killing 10 guards with an arrow storm. Hey, airstrike, there we go. And performed a 10 kill execution streak. Hey, serial killer, nice. Before I found Leonardo and completed the DLC. GPS. That's the Da Vinci disappearance done. I wasn't quite done with the quick and easy trophies though, so off I went to pay off my notoriety, only to pickpocket the money back. Alright, all I should have to do is pay this guy, bribe him, and then take it back. Easy come, easy go. Thank you. <laughs> Stole five horses from guards without touching the ground. Grand Theft Dressage. Took out a guard with a broom. Spring cleaning. Beat up the five harlequins hanging out around the map. And that's the harlequins done. Clowning around. At the speed of sound. <laughs> Successfully pulled off a double assassination from a parachute. Special delivery. Won $10,000 on this game called Hazard. Not really sure how this game worked, but I was so good at it, I actually won twice. It just didn't give it to me the first time. Is that it? That should be it, isn't it? Didn't I just win like 15,000 bucks? I'm confused. Lucky's with me. Hey, high roll. There we go. First roll twice. <laughs> that was really easy. Threw a smoke bomb, heavy and long weapon at a guard more than 10 meters away for some reason. There we go, strong arm. Cool. Placed a bet of $500 on the fights and won. The gloves come off. It too easy, guys. Too easy. Jump from the top of Castel Sant Angelo? Yeesh. With my parachute. Is it gonna pop when I hit the ground or? What the f did I do wrong there? There we go, fly like an eagle. Don't know why that didn't work the first time, but... And completed 10 guild challenges, which I didn't even know existed until I got to this point, and only had two more challenges to complete for the trophy. There we go, show off. Easy. I need a couple left on that one. But with all those miscellaneous trophies done and dusted, all that was left was to find all the collectibles and complete my 100% synchronization journey, and Brotherhood's Platinum Trophy was mine. I decided to find all the feathers in Rome first, mainly because, well, there's only 10 of them this time, and I already had 5, so that was an easy grab, especially with the ability to buy collectible maps. Last feather, let's go! In memoriam, 10 feathers. 
bit of a bit of a bloody difference. Bit of a difference. <laughs> but after that, it was time to first clean up my 100% sync objectives I missed in the missions I finished already. I only missed a couple in the main game, simple enough to take care of, and honestly, the optional objectives in 99% of the missions are perfectly fine. Maybe the don't get detected in longer missions is rather rude sometimes when you make one mistake at the end or complete the tombs in less than 8 minutes only to be at the door and time runs out. But most of the time I was completing these objectives my first time and when I didn't, coming back afterwards it didn't take me too long to finish up. That 1% is reserved though for the optional objective in Da Vinci's tank mission where once in the tank you need to not get shot this is a fine objective until the very end when you have to fight two tanks at once in a smaller arena and when you fail back your ass up 15 minutes to try all over again this mission was infuriating to say the least to the point where i didn't want to spend hours on this mission replaying the tailing portion or lead up to the final tank battle so i did the sneaky exploit of activating the enemy tanks but backing up just enough to not desync and take them out without risk of being hit. Cheesy but necessary, and trust me, I tried without the exploit for a solid couple of hours. Oh no. That's so annoying, I couldn't see where he was. Okay, the, the run back's not horrible, but it's not great. I should ju you should just be able to go straight to the tank part. That that is a, w a wild thing they decided to do. Like it's so such a brain dead move to not have checkpoints. Are you fucking serious? This mission is fucking ass, dude. Like this low ass fucking walk, and then you gotta do the fucking. It's just a pain in the ass for no reason. Like who? thought of this shit this is disgusting that should be it because that is a terrible that is the worst 100 sync i think is is even possible a 15 minute level that you have to restart because the end is like awful there we go hell on wheels buddy almost an hour later we love that with the 100% cleanup done in terms of replaying missions, now all that was left were the side missions. 6 Templar agents to take out, 12 assassination contracts to carry out, and 10 missions a piece between the Courtesans and Thieves Guild. This step was repetitive, just the same sort of mission on repeat. In fact, I had to mix it up any way I could by collecting any Borgia flags of which I needed 101 and Subject 16's glyphs of which I needed to solve 10. But after four or so hours, I finally completed my last Thieves Guild mission, unlocking 100% sync on everything. Yes! Il Principe. Probably butchered it, but alright, the 100% sync crap is done. Solved all of Subject 16's riddles. Yes! Solved all of Subject 16's puzzles. And with revisiting some layers for the remaining Borgia flags, snagged the final one, and after 30 hours, Brotherhood's Platinum Trophy was mine. And we come out here. Capture the flag for all the Borgio flags, Borgia. Julius Caesar. And that is Brotherhood's Platinum done. Alright, now we just have one more game to go. And now I was ready to finish this collection and Ezio's story in Revelations. Revelations has always been a game in this series I felt was rather underrated, or at least it was when it originally released, and I think a large part of that has to do with yearly releases and the same character throughout. It just felt like a forgotten title, but I always enjoyed it and was excited to see how it holds up today. But in terms of what it takes to grab Revelations Platinum Trophy, according to PSM profiles, the game ranks a 4 out of 10 in terms of difficulty, should take 35 hours to complete, and like 
like Brotherhood, the PS4 version removed the multiplayer trophies and replaced them with the Lost Archives DLC trophies instead. Thankfully, despite having a 100% synchronization trophy in Fond Memories, it just pertains to the main sequences, which usually are pretty simple to pull off your first go around. But once again, I'm getting ahead of myself. Revelations begins with Desmond in a coma, stuck in the Animus, and finally meets Subject 16. Subject 16, or Clay, lets Desmond know to escape the Animus and regain his consciousness before it's too late he must relive the remaining memories of Ezio, who is now in his 50s leaving Italy for Masyaf, the assassin's former fortress. Ezio finds the fortress overrun by Templars and Altair's library he had been searching for locked away behind five keys. So we narrowly escape. Best serve cold. DNA sequence one in the books. And head to Constantinople to retrieve said keys before the Templars can. Right off the boat, we meet up with the Ottoman assassin's leader, Yusuf, and not long after we learn that the Templars are using the Ottoman prince's quarrel of who the next Sultan of the empire will be to their advantage. And that is our stage set find all the keys of Altair's library, help the princes squash their beef, assassinating folks along the way, and escape the Animus. Istanbul and Constantinople. And seal the deal, there you go. The Prince. The plot thickens. Successes and failures. Skip ahead to the twist and after all our hard work to squash the Byzantine Templars, it turns out one of the princes is the true leader of the Templars and wants to open Altair's library himself. Old boss, new boss. Back on Animus Island, the Animus begins to delete excess data and Clay sacrifices himself so Desmond can escape. Back to Ezio and long story short, Ahmet kills and kidnaps Ezio's friends, is killed by his brother and Ezio is banished from Constantinople. Priorities. And with keys in hand, heads to Altair's library where he finds the apple that Altair died to protect and activates it, but not for himself. He activates it for Desmond before retiring from the assassins to start a normal life with Sophia. As Desmond, we learn we need to save the world before an imminent solar flare destroys humanity, and Desmond finally escapes his coma, ready to conclude his story in Assassin's Creed 3. But that's a story for another time. For now, that concludes Revelations and Ezio's story. Hey, Revelations, that was really quick. I thought that was like three missions or something. All right, that's the main story done. For our time through the story, we're guaranteed to unlock just 10 trophies, most of which are unlocked by completing the nine sequences and just the one for having a trainee reach the rank of Master Assassin, which is a story requirement. My protege. Oh. I didn't unlock many more throughout this process either. I did however manage to complete a Den Defense, Revelation's new tower defense mode, and one without using the cannon. Iron Curtain. That one's an easy one. I'm glad I knew what the trophies were. Assassinated 50 guards with the hidden blade, which is a pretty natural trophy if you mainly use the blades. Overkiller. What's that for? 50 kills with the good old hidden blade. Got our money back from a Templar tax collector, which just looks like the pickpockets from the other games. Tax evasion. Just seems like a regular pickpocketer from the other games, but... And killed three guards simultaneously with only throwing knives, which I did on accident after holding triangle for too long. There we go, silent but deadly. That's it. 12 hours down, 14 trophies done, and a whole lot more work left to do. We had a heap of side missions to complete, main missions to replay, assassins to level up, collectibles to, well, collect, and a whole heap of miscellaneous combat and platforming trophies to try and figure out. First thing I wanted to knock off this list was Pyromaniac, which was simply to complete all the bomb missions, which unlock more bombs to be able to craft, which would help us later. There are eight missions, all take around 30 seconds, so not too bad, but if we keep an eye out in the Cherry Bomb mission, we can also find old Tushio and beat his ass for a trophy as well. I think this is a trophy here. Yeah. Because there's nothing. <laughs> yep, bully. Find and beat up Duccio. <laughs> 
Pyromaniac. Yeah, that was pretty quick. It was only 45 minutes. With those two trophies out of the way, my next step was to complete the trophy, The Mentor, which is for having seven trainees reach the rank of Master Assassin. Just like in Brotherhood, you can send your assassins out on missions to gain XP and money, except this time you can only level them up to level 10, and to get them to Master Assassin, you need to assign them to an Assassin Den, which are liberated from the Templars. Once they're den leaders, you can complete a couple of missions and they hit max rank. This process takes some time, so first up, let's quickly grab Armchair General and use our assassins to take over each city in the game simultaneously. Hey, there we go, Armchair General. Control all cities except roads. I'm not really sure what that means because Rhodes isn't on the map, but simultaneously in the Mediterranean defense game, which if you have enough assassins is easy. Quick and easy, and with the world at peace, it was time to start grabbing some miscellaneous trophies, and for some reason, I gravitated to poison first. Don't ask me why, but with my new and improved bombs, I managed to take out 10 guards with poison all at once. There we go, mosh pit. And have a guard take out three innocent bystanders while poisoned. Monsters dance. Hey, cool. It wasn't too long after my poison party, I leveled up my 7th trainee to Master Assassin. Hey, the mentor. And then it was time to hunt down some collectibles. Of course, we had 100 of something to collect in this game, but let's start out easy. There are 10 memoir pages to find in the world, which once we have, unlock a special challenge or level also for a trophy. So two birds really here. Worth a thousand words. Collect all the memoir pages. Holy wisdom. But with that done, I really buckled down and started to focus on all these random trophies, like climbing this building from the ground to the tippy top in under 25 seconds. There we go, spider assassin. That was, that was pretty easy. Killed five guards with the scaffolding after they've been stunned with caltrops. It doesn't have to be all five at once. There we go, mousetrap. Now. Took out five guards under a smoke screen. I can see you. Completed all of a faction's challenges, which the assassins is by far the easiest to do so, and also the most natural. Hey, a friend indeed. Looted 50 dead guards with thief looting, which to unlock you need to complete the thieves guild tier two challenges. Then hire some thieves and well, have them loot 50 guards. This one was deceptively grindy. Oh, fast fingers, thank goodness. Loot 50 dead guards. That is a that is a grind for no reason. Parachuted onto a zip line. There we go, show off. That is so much easier than I made it out to be in my head. Parachuted directly from the top of this tower all the way to the water. Almost flying, okay. Seemed to go right to the water, but all right. Not sure what the golden horn is, I'm assuming it's this boat, but trophy's a trophy. I'm done with that. <laughs> Killed five guards in five seconds with our hidden blades. There we go, lightning strikes. And crafted 30 bombs. Craft maniac. Okay, cool. Craft 30 bombs, that's done. I don't have to worry about that anymore. Probably shouldn't have taken as long, but... Wasn't really a bomb user, you know? Just wasn't wasn't really vibing with them. But I mean, they can be pretty handy. I told you a lot of random crap, but with all that filler complete, we were nearing the end. I decided to tidy up the few levels I didn't 100% my first time through, which definitely didn't frustrate me one bit. I can hate these axe. I hate them. When does he ever swing that quickly? F sake! I spoke too soon. <laughs> Fucking sick of this shit. Fond memories. Oh my god. What a pain in the ass. Thank god. Okay, no more replaying levels. That is over. And then it was on to collecting all 100 Animus data fragments. You knew it was coming, and once again, it's whatever at this point. Just shut your brain off, watch some YouTube, or if you're like me, catch up on some Supernatural in this time. Look up a guide until you hit 50, then the rest appear on your map. And here it is, the last Animus fragment. Capped. Oh, I'm so sick of those 100 collectible trophies. They, uh, not my friend, not my friend. 
But here comes the most deceptive trophy in this whole game. The only trophy in this collection that made me actually have to leave my game running overnight just to get it. I'm talking about the trophy Sage for collecting all books in the game. Sounded simple enough, buy all the books from the stores and find all the books in the world which are highlighted on the map. Simple. Except for the fact that the last four books you need to buy cost around $300,000 and the bank vault only holds $120,000. Thankfully, I had enough saved to buy two of the last four books, but again, not enough, which meant leaving the game running while the daily money came in. This was so unnecessary, but at least it's a leave and do something else type of time waster. Alright, last books. I'm hoping I've done the math right. I think I don't think it was two hundred thousand, so we should be fine. And then, um, what do you have to do again? I think I might have to quit out and then come back. Now, does quit the game mean this, or does it mean? To... Yep, there we go. Sage. Oh, that that trophy is deceptively annoying. And with that done, our time with Ezio had come to an end, but not our time with the game, unfortunately. You see, in Revelations, we have some sequences to play in first person as Desmond, which are unlocked through the Animus fragments, and these are just terrible. Thankfully, they're quick, but oh so boring, and leading into an equally bad DLC. Oh my god, the early years. I already know, I'm not gonna like these. The reluctant Assassin. Escape to New York. The Rotten Apple. One more. Are you Desmond Miles? God, I hope not. <laughs> the Lost Archive is just Desmond's sequences, but as Subject 16. Again, these are seven quick levels, but oh, so boring. So let's wrap this up. We land on a block after falling 25 meters, get all the trophies for beating the DLC story, find every fragment in the DLC, that's all of them. Find all pieces. With said fragments, we replay chapter 5 to escape this loop. Alright, breaking the loop. That's the story done. And just for funsy, complete level 4 and part of level 7 without dying, which I definitely did my first try and didn't bungle it, postponing my platinum another 30 minutes. It's literally, I just have to make it over there. Why did I do that? That was dumb. That was just, I don't know what was going through my mind there. And just like that, the DLC was complete. And after 30 hours, Revelations Platinum Trophy was mine. And our time with the Ezio collection had come to an end. I think I... <gasps> yes! Fuck. First tried that thing. My heart was racing the whole time. That's not important. It should be it. As long as I don't somehow butcher this right at the end for no reason. I almost did. Yes! Cross sticks without dying. <sighs> the Conqueror. Oh my... I... <laughs> that's the... That's the collection done. I am so Assassin's Creed out. It's not funny, I'm just... Oh, I can't wait to play some other games, man. I'm, I'm over this. So, after 89 hours in total, that's a lot less than some estimates out there, I'll say that. Some people say this is a 100 to 120 hour endeavor, so pretty speedy little boy if I do say so myself. What did I think of the Ezio collections, platinum trophies, and the games in general? First off, let's talk about the games, because when I think of Assassin's Creed and my mega fandom of the series, I think of Ezio and his games. You know, 2009 to 2011, so I'm 12 to 14 years old. Pretty impressionable time, so I am very nostalgic for these games, and I'll be honest, I did have a lot of fun revisiting the games, even if I didn't love everything the Platinum Trophies had me doing. 
I loved re-experiencing Ezio's story from start to finish. I loved experiencing the Renaissance, seeing historical figures and locations with a twist. I loved both Italy and my time in the Middle East. It was great to see the gameplay evolve and add new mechanics even if counter is just too damn strong in combat, and even when the burnout had set in around the early part of Revelations due to playing these games back to back to back, I still was excited to complete the collection and Ezio's story. I don't love everything about the games. I still don't care for the current day story or taking me out of the history to explore boring warehouses. The gameplay loop can get repetitive and it definitely feels like early Ubisoft. Not quite as bad as they are now with their open worlds, but the same general objectives. But overall, I just had a lot of fun with these games. Until the Platinums made me not have so much fun. Most of the trophies in this collection are totally fine. I think AC2 outside of the 100 feathers is very fun to Platinum, but Brotherhood and Revelations do have their slip ups. Mainly the 100% sync in Brotherhood and all the first person puzzle platforming in Revelations plus the books. It just was more infuriating than it needed to be, but again, as a whole, for all my Platinum Trophy hunters and achievement hunters looking for a good collection of games to play and hunt, the Ezio collection is one I do highly recommend. It has its challenges and maybe break up the games unlike myself, but these are great games that I really am happy I finally added to my Platinum collection. Not sure when I'll jump back into the world of Assassin's Creed, right now I am severely burnt out, but hey, maybe I'll pick up the next game sooner than you think. Thank you all so much for watching, make sure if you did enjoy the video to leave it a like because it helps let me know that you enjoyed yourself. Comment below some more games you want to see get Platinum next, as well as your favourite Assassin's Creed game and Platinum trophy. Thank you to all my channel members for that extra level of support, and special thanks to those in the Bear Club, Gene T. Papi, Jackie White, Nugget, Dark Wolf, Daniel Fitzgerald, Scott Unwin, Steel Vanguard, MPO Crusader, and Zafado. It really does mean a lot to me. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe, go give my socials a follow if you fancy at Mayor Hair Bear. Join the Discord server to have a chat, go and chuck me a follow on Twitch if you want to see some of these Platinum Journeys live, or Mayor Hair Bear VODs if those pesky time zones don't line up for you, and I'll catch you all in the next video.